I'm Lawrence Pugliese, and you're watching another episode of Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes here on Electric City Television. And in this episode, we feature someone I think you might know if you've been watching this station over the years, or if you've been going to theater productions over the years in northeastern Pennsylvania. He's an actor, an educator, and DJ to the stars, among other things, Mr. Connor McGuigan. We're going to have Connor here at the table. We're going to talk to him about all kinds of stuff, and he's going to perform for us. Right now, he's ready to perform a piece. So let's go to Mr. McGuigan. This is called Same Song, New Thumb. Mark, you're going to love this. Wigan here on Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes. Woo, yeah. Thank you. That really takes it out of me. It was deep. All right. Very deep. Connor, again, is uh, he's an icon here in northeastern Pennsylvania for sure and uh, a talent that is world class. Oh, and we're, wow. we're lucky to have him here. <laughs> and we really are. And, and, uh, Good gravy. I appreciate it. It's been what? About 19 years. 19 years since the last one? 19 years. Two more years and that gap can drink. 
<laughs> it's amazing, 19 yeah. years. But at least that gap can vote now. At least it can at vote. At least we can vote. Yeah, but it's been a while, 2005. Yeah. yeah well, Bush was president. It was a wild time. It really was. And we thought that was the worst. Yeah, I know. Boy, how stupid we were. It got much worse. Yeah. Well, let's not start on that. No, no let's not start yeah. on that. We're talking uh, national politics. Locally, <laughs> it's been pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, hey, we can smile. At least there hasn't been at least a scandal for at least two hours. At so. least two hours. No one's been indicted. <sighs> not bad. Yeah. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about where you're from here in Northeastern I am. God's Playground, Southside Scranton. Southside Scranton. That's right. It's the best place on earth. And your family, like your, your, uh, your father, your mom, your sister, Maureen, mm -hmm. you, you guys all had a, a, a homestead. Your father and mother still live there. Yeah, yeah, they're still in Southside. My dad's originally from North Scranton, Is Rockwell it? Avenue. Rockwell. That's right, Rockwell, up by the Combanks. Banks. And my mom was Lace Curtain Irish, and she was from Greenridge, out by the islands oh. on Kapouse Avenue. Yeah. Oh, the Very islands. Very different backgrounds. But somehow, you know, love persists. Yeah. And then you get... If they didn't meet, who else would see a thumb in a smoking jacket <laughs> doing that? Right. They created something special. God bless, God bless that them. they did that back in 1978. Yeah, yeah. 1978. That's when I was conceived. That's when you were conceived. Hopefully it's Jimmy Thomas. <laughs> and, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We don't that, know. That's the, uh, the artist that you Timmy just, Thomas. Yeah, uh, why, uh, yeah that's, he's great. That's, yeah. uh, I just, first, I found that 45 back in 2005 when I did that originally on your show and I just thought I mean I love the song but with that little one note <laughs> like solo <laughs> I'm yeah. like I love the song but that's the silliest goddamn thing it, ever it, it is. but I love it I still love it it works but it works it works yeah. and and um you know uh, when when we used to have you on back in the early 2000s yeah the aughts the aughts you did all kinds of stuff that people used to like uh, uh scran not scran man it was yeah it was a scran man ranto i did or, i did ranto 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 because it was the word scranton in the middle is ranto right and i made this silly kind of acronym initialism out of it with those resident animatronic neo transportational omni man 50. He people was a robot it. that could carry people around town, some stupid character I made for a play that I had called Scrantonia, yeah. And people, I walked down the street and they would, you know, they oh. would say they, they saw that. They, on their porches, people would be going, you know, Yeah. Ranto, yeah. you can't say Scranton without... Without Ranto, yeah. yeah you something. can't spell Scranton without Ranto 50. It was, so, yeah, it was like a Power Rangers mask that I found at the dollar store, I think. And um, yeah, it was that that stuff a lot. And I would have people too stop me because they'd be like, you know, a lot of these times these these the these show would be on like two a.m. You know, people would be out of their gourd, and here's me going <laughs> Rando fifty, Perfect. or I'm in the thumb, or I'm with the Freddie puppet, whatever I'm doing, and be like, what the hell am I watching? You know? <laughs> and they'd see me like, were you the thing? I'm like, that was mind blowing, man. I don't know what it was. I'm like, I don't either. Um, and so yeah, but a lot of those developed because of the bog um, open mic nights. I lived upstairs at the bog, and it would, I think they started at 10. It'd be like 8.30 of upstairs. I'm like, I want to do something. And I'd just like play a record, and I'd figure something out. You know, that's how it would come out. And I'd go downstairs and perform to people who were just drinking and not paying attention. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. The bog was great like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, It yeah, still yeah. is. It still, still is. is. Their, yeah. their music's coming back. They have live music on Wednesdays now, and a lot of great bands uh, now have a place to play. It's uh, not that they didn't, you know, because there's a lot of places in the area that do. But it's great that the Bog now has music. Yeah, well, like you know, the Bog is, is near and dear to our heart. Oh, absolutely, yeah. best bar in the world. I think so. I've been all over the world, and I, I tell you, I, I know I'm a little biased, but the Bog is great. I mean, I've been in 32 countries, and and there's been some good bars, but there's something about the Bog, man. And it's not just me. People, this is such an ad for the Bog. For it really is. <laughs> I'm we sorry, Bob and Rudy, and everybody down there does such a great job. Back some money, to but us. they. <laughs> <laughs> the riches, that's their pot. <laughs> Every night they go to bed in a giant pile of money. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but everybody I know from out of town is like, what is it about this place? This is great. I'm like, yeah, it's just something. Oh, yeah, work. the office people used to hang oh, out Oh, my there. God, Brian Baumgartner uh, played Kevin. Uh, he came back just to be a bartender the one night. Yeah. He was in town. He said, I'm going to come back. And so, yeah, with the drawer open, he was just hurting people. He was just having a blast. Yeah. And I think I heard stories about, you know, there might be mythologies here. I'm, I'm, I'm tapping into it, but like Kiefer Sutherland was there one I time. was there. The uh, Kiefer Sutherland tried to buy my girlfriend a drink. Right, and she snuffed, she and snubbed she's, him. And she snubbed him. I said, are you an idiot? Take The guy's got the money. I mean, get a story out of it. Come on. I'm like, I don't care. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I was there, and uh, Craig Robinson from the office was freestyle, freestyle rapping while I was DJing. He came up. Uh, Angela was there. Creed was hanging out in the kitchen a few times. You know, all the office people really came That's through. really, really cool. Yeah. I even heard Jerry Adams. He was like the political leader for Cindy. Yeah, I heard. I wasn't there, but I heard he, he swung in. Yeah. He swung in, too. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Now, uh, so from Southside, and then you went to Scranton Public Schools? Or are you? I did, yeah. I'm a, I'm a proud uh, graduate of the Scranton Public School System. I went to John G. Whittier Number 2. Uh, which uh, is in Upper South Side there. And then um, I went to South Scranton, which looks like a factory, and it's terrifying uh, when you're coming from a small classroom and there's Mr. Devine, he takes care of everybody, and then you're thrown into this factory of, I mean, I graduated, I'm one of the youngest in my grade. Is this middle school we're talking about? Yeah, going into middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth. I'm the, one of the youngest in my grade. My mom, when I was five, was like, he knows his colors and numbers, get him out of the house. <laughs> Uh, my sister used to joke that uh, some people have empty nest syndrome. My mom was actually stepping on our wings as she was pushing us. <laughs> and I love my mother. She's a dear, dear woman. She's she a is. lovely mother, done such a good, but she does like her freedom, as we all do in our family. And so, yeah, we laugh about that. So, yeah, she, she, I went to kindergarten early. So when I went to South, I was in sixth grade. I was 10 years old. That is young. And uh, my birthday is the end of November. Um, and so I'm in there with these kids. They put me, they accidentally put me on the eighth grade floor for lockers. And sixth graders and eighth graders, a lot happens height-wise. And I'm 10. And these kids are enormous. And I'm sitting there like, you know, they, and some of them, I mean, this is south in 1989. They might have been 15 or 16 <laughs> held back. I don't know. There were some, I mean, the one kid uh, in my class was definitely like 16 years old in my science class. I was like, this is, what's going on? Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a whole different world getting into that, you know. And, th and then Scranton High, I went to the new Scranton, the one? No, the old building, the tech building. The tech building. Yeah, now it's so, Northeastern Intermediate. Yeah, it was Northeastern Intermediate, and, uh, or it was. I mean, it is now. But, um, yeah, I was there, like, I started in 92, so, like, right after they combined, uh, 92 to 96. And, um, yeah, my dad was teaching there, too, and then he retired the same year I graduated. So the McGuigans were, were out there. Right, and your dad's a renowned poet. He is. He's written a poem or two in his time. Yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah no, my dad's uh, a phenomenal poet. And uh, I've always been lucky because growing up, my upbringing was insanely different, obviously, for many reasons, and I'm very fortunate. But uh, like, you know, everybody has their bathroom books and or maybe whatever, a magazine or two. My dad would have like, I, I was a kid reading Basho because he'd have the haiku, Perfect. you know, or, or whatever it was, you know, um, all these Irish poets and Seamus Haney and all these other guys, you know, uh, Patrick Kavanaugh. Uh, and they were just there. So I'm like looking, I'm a kid. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll read this, you know. Right, right. Um, and things like that, he'd always encourage writing. And, and uh, so, yeah, I was fortunate. I grew up in a very literate kind of forward. Hey, try writing. Use your words. Fine. Things aren't just nice. What are they? You can pick a better word, you know, things like that. So Excellent. And your sister's also in, into the arts. She doesn't know nothing. <laughs> Maureen, no, yeah. No, she... my sister, of course, is a phenomenal writer as well. Went to graduate school for it. And, yeah, same thing. She's written many plays. Um, she has had one uh, one-woman show. And um, the Scranton Fringe Festival. Right, right. I, um, I think Ali uh, Grega. Yeah, like she, it. yeah, she directed it, yeah. and then um, we had the theremin from uh, Jason. Oh, he's Plant. awesome. Yeah, he's he's amazing. Um, yeah, it was really, really well done. I was I was so so proud of her because it's been a while since she's actually been on stage. Uh, so yeah, she had this one person show and just and it was all her personal stuff. She's obsessed with death, and so she put the show out there that just put all her thoughts and. You know, she's a weird person, but I love her for it. And I think this play got to show people that. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't get a chance to see it, but I hear they're going to... They gonna, filmed it, yeah, and yeah. I think they're going to yeah, put it out there. So, yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. So, um, after after high school, then, uh, you know, you traveled a lot, as you said. Yeah. 32 countries, and I don't know, did you... Um, hit any post-secondary institutions, or did you say, nah, it's not for me? I went to Pitt for one year, and um, I... Uh, my sister went to Pitt, and she was there for four years. So we'd go out to visit her. I'm like, well, I knew Pittsburgh. I really had no interest in um, really college. Just, I've never been like, like a school, school person. I, I, I think I'm, I'm very smart, but just never been my thing. So I went that one year, and I was very depressed. Uh, but this is back in the 90s where, like, mental health wasn't really as talked about now. Like, no. I'm married to a therapist now, so trust me, mental perfect. health all the way. Yeah, I literally just started therapy you're lucky. yesterday. Yeah. And I'm very proud of that. You yeah, know? you're lucky. Um, and, uh, but back then it wasn't, you know, as talked about, you didn't really think of it as an option, you know. Uh, but I was very depressed. And so I went one year and then dropped out, you know, lived in Pittsburgh and I lived with a girlfriend down in Philly. 
uh, Stacy, who I, I'm still very good friends with. She was the best man at my wedding. Giovanucci? Um, Giovanucci, yeah, yeah. All the way from Old Forge down there behind Ravella's. Um, but yeah, so, and then I, I, I didn't do anything for a while like that, but then I was in my early 20s. I'm like, I'm just going to buy a ticket and go away. And I went to Europe and backpacked around Europe. And from then I'm like, I'm going to keep going places and try to go as many places as I want. So that kind of... That's an education. Me. That's an education. It is. I actually always say <laughs> that I think you shouldn't be able to go to college until you've done a few months going someplace and just seeing how other, not even, you know, maybe you don't have the money, but try to go like another part of the state. Oh, yeah. Like go, go someplace where you're, you're not from there. Right. And figure stuff out. Right. It, it's a, it's, it does a lot for your brain to wake up in the morning and be like, okay, I don't know the street. I don't know how to get to the, you know, your brain has to do a lot. And especially at those 18, 19, 20, early 20s, like your brain's learning every day you get out and learn. Um, so, I, yeah, I was just working at a cafe and saved up all my money and then spent all my money. That's how I did it. Well, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I uh, did the same kind of thing. Yeah. I left early, and, I, and I, I'm so happy that I did. The, the little, I didn't do as much traveling as you, but all the traveling I did, yeah. such wonderful experiences. Get oh, to know yeah. who you are. Absolutely. And understanding other people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it really is cultures. getting to know who you are. <clears throat> oh, when yeah. you spend that much time by yourself, away from your family and friends and things like that. They were like, oh, and you're going to have terrible times where you cry alone. You're like, what am I doing? And then other times they were like, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And then for life, you've got stories. You do. You do. And, and you have to get out of that cocoon. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And yeah. I know it, it's, and it is not for everybody. Like, I yeah. say that, and some people, they don't want to. And that's fine. Like, everybody's got their own thing. But I think, like, before you go to college, it's good to do something like that. So you'd be like, oh, okay. And then you go to college and you're like, know a little bit more about yourself. You're a little grounded. Okay, I like this, this, and this. Right. You know, that's who I am. And you right. go to college like, oh, I'm going to go in this direction then because I've already got a base about who I am. Yeah, I think that's wise. Yeah. Well, you don't want to just become a worker bee in the drone. Yeah. Oftentimes that's what I think we're cultivated to do. A hundred percent. Go to college, get the job, get the spouse, have the kids, retire and die. Right. You know. Yeah. Oh, and if you have some time when you're 70, all right, now go on vacation. Right. Like, no, do it when your knees don't hurt. You know? Right, like, right. Yeah. yeah I, I think, agree. Yeah. But you're you know, looked at as sort of a, a strange person if you don't follow that formula. Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what society has. I mean, even our, our educational system. Um, no doubt. I, I work with the NEIU and, and um, you know, using arts as a way to teach. I worked with PAEP and NEIU. A couple years ago in this great These program. acronyms, would you tell them? Oh, I know. The Philadelphia Arts and Something Program, forgive me because I've been working with them for years, but they're based out of Philly. Right. And they had a great um, program down there where they took artists, like visual artists, and put them in math classes and worked with the teachers to get results using different parts of the brain. So, you know, schools are set up on like a, a 1700 style version of universities, mm -hmm. sit in a row. Lecture, listen, write. It goes back and, to, and, since the 17th century. That, that's wow. when it goes back wow. to like these, <clears throat> I don't know, Jeffersonian would be a word, but anyway, those like British institutions. Um, and they came to America, and that's like not how our brains are wired, you know, and especially for young kids. They, you know, they need to be accessed different ways, and studies have proved this time and time and time again. So they had these artists come in and taught math in these like tough schools, like tough, tough schools down in Philly, that the numbers weren't great. And so whatever these artists did with the teachers, they worked in tandem together, the scores went through the roof because they were having kids learn in different ways and being physical and, and tactile and, and making the numbers make sense to them in different ways. So they brought the program up here, and we've been worked with schools up here, and so they started working with um, reading and writing, things like that, but with like um, dance and, and, and theater teachers. So I worked with teachers then taking how do we learn what metaphors and similes are, using acting and things like that. Beautiful. And, and it's, it's been really fun. It's been really fun. And you're still doing it. Yeah. Well, that program, that one program is, is uh, done for right now. Um, it's all about based on grants and things like that. But I am still working in the, the schools as an artist in residence. Through um, NEIU. Through NEIU. And that's yeah, Northeast. Yeah. Inter Northeastern Intermediate Unit. Right. Number 19. Number yeah. 19. Yeah. Catherine Cullen and Liz Feister always got me going Good out. People. Good yeah, people. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they actually, um, I, they started a program in Wyoming and Luzerne County, or I mean, yeah, Wyoming and Luzerne, where we go to um, active adult centers. We have uh, senior citizens. And so now here's people who never acted in their life, but I show up once a week for 10 weeks, and we work on theater, and they, they, I leave there feeling so good. 
they are just delighted. I, I was in Falls, and I'm going to be in Tunkana coming up. So it's, it's really great that I get to do that work. With yeah, them. yeah. I, because I'm sure there's a lot of there are a lot of folks in those places who have tons inside of them, but it's not being oh. stimulated. Oh, th this one woman, I mean, she like, you know, grew up in a farm girl somewhere out in Falls, and now she's in her late 70s and had a great productive life. But my God, was she born for the stage. This, this woman, I mean, she got up there every time and she was improv stuff and her face came alive. I'm like, she could have been, you know, doing stuff. It was, it was really great to see. That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, when, when we're, we're talking about your life, you're obviously yeah. an artist, you yeah. know? And I drew this shirt. Did you draw that? I did. That's my sister's cat. I drew that. Is there a name for the Yeah, that, that was Danny. And I actually put this picture, uh, I drew it on a piece of paper, and I gave it to her for Christmas, framed. Uh, and then she liked it so much, she made it into shirts. Awesome. My sister's really got the, the gumption, the go-ahead. Yeah, she does. I, I have ideas, but I never got the go-ahead. Well, she, she's a you know, big government official that helps facilitate the arts. In even as a child in the alley, because she was older than me and all my friends, but she was the administrative facilitator. <laughs> She'd be like, okay, we're going to have a parade. I, you're in front. You take the thing over there. You take the bike. And she was always, I mean, that was her role. So it really makes sense that she kind of continues to do totally that. It does totally make yeah, sense. Yeah, 100%. Well, how, how hard is it, would you say, for uh, a person to, to make a life for themselves, economically speaking? Mm. As an artist. That's a thing. <laughs> I mean, th that people even are able to? For me, I'm pulling my Senior Stavala moment my tissue. Uh, Everybody out there, look up Senior Stavala on the old, oh, RIP, what a wonderful man. Uh, but there was an episode where he blew his nose a lot, so that's my reference. And Yeah, I remember that episode. Oh, I have to find it. But, yeah, can you make as an artist? You can in the local scene. You can do it. You just have to be flexible. You got to be pliable. You got to roll with the punches. Um, the way I do it, I mean, I, it is not just on my art now. There was a time when the electric theater company was around. I really was a company member and I, you know, was, I worked there and we did a lot of shows. Now a lot of my money does come through like teaching theater and stuff like that, you know. Um, but you can do it, but, but it's not easy. I mean, it, it's not. And that's why every actor is a bartender or a waiter, which I also am, you know. Um, yeah, I've got a hundred different jobs. So, you know, but a lot of it is artistic, and I do like, you know, so I, that's my life. You I channel really, it no matter where. I, yeah, it's coming out some way, and, right. and I do make money from it in various ways. So, Well, what do you think about that? You know, that our society doesn't allow people uh, to make a living as an artist. It's like, look, that is, like you said, you have to have grant money. It's not, yeah, it's always grants, and it's all, and well, even at, and coming back to school, it's always the first thing cut. Right. You know, football will have pads for the next 20,000 years, but the music's the going course right is up. Gone. The course yeah. is gone, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, again, I think coming back to uh, go to school, go to college, get the job, it's that. It, it, it's, it doesn't have a purpose to a lot of people who control the money, uh, you know, uh, or, or maybe. I don't, that's just my guess. Uh, I think you might be um, onto something there, yes. It's not productive in numbers. Quantifiable. You know, it, it's not quantifiable, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think that's probably got a, a, a big reason for it. Even though everybody goes home, turns on the TV, and watches somebody saying somebody else's words that they wrote with people who held cameras and right. adjusted lights and did all the artistic stuff. You right. know, we watch arts every single day or listen to them. Right. But we like to pretend that you know they're not don't, important. We don't have to give them any money and help them out. You know, yeah. and, and you've been around in you, you know yeah. other countries, and I think you've probably realized that other countries handle it differently. Some, yeah. I, I mean, I've read. I know Scandinavia. I think Sweden has a. I think it's Sweden, one of the Scandinavian countries, has like a, a tremendous. Like the government gives a ton uh, to the artistic uh, endeavors there. Uh, now, I will say. Probably easier for them. Their population is much less than ours. We've Good got point. a massive country. Yep. And how do you regulate that? We should have more money then. We should, exactly. Right? I mean, well, I mean, we can, I, I'm sure we can both agree where things could be cut from here like that, you know. There's a lot of waste, I'm sure, in government. But yeah, so that, that's part of it. But yeah, there's definitely other countries I've seen. Um, oh, Valparaiso, Chile. Chile, that's. I know, it's one of the Chile. Chile, that's the Yeah, way I, say I know, that's the way I say it. It always sounds so high flu. Chile, I was right. in Chile, you know. Rather than saying Chile. I know, but I'm from Scranton. It's Chile. Um, but anyway, Valparaiso is a town that really embraced their graffiti artists, and the entire town is covered in graffiti murals. Beautiful. Every business, 
and they don't, for the most part, they're not done over by like the youth. Like they're pretty much respected. It does happen. But I took a tour and it's like, it's on a hill and it's just like every alleyway, every street is just, it, it's wild. And it's funded by these guys, people are, are... Some of them are, like the private businesses will be like, oh, I want that artist, so they'll pay for it. And right. some of it will be like a, a city walk, and yeah. they'll pay for that, you know? Like, right. So it's a little, a little give and take. could be personal or it could be funded. Well, we're kind of doing that in, in this neck of the woods a oh, little bit. I love, I love the murals coming in. Mari McGuigan, there yeah. she is. She helped, she helped get some of these people she in did. there. She's, she did. She's a, but yeah, I love seeing all the murals go up uh, around town. Um, up in Dunmore, they do it too. Liz oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just saw uh, even the, the girls' basketball team they put on the side of the Petro's Pharmacy there, right, things right. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. It's Oh, it's great. It, it's it's way better than looking at a dumb wall. Right, a bunch of cinder blocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might agree. as well put something on there. Arts are important, and uh, you know, you are, again, I think you're an icon uh, in our neck of the woods, which is a significant neck of the woods. An iconer. You're an iconer. An iconer. See, this is what I'm talking about. Iconer class. He just, he's there like that yeah. all the time. Um, so yeah, thanks again for being here. Now oh, I know pinball. Oh yeah, the yeah, pinball. He's scene a pinball in wizard. Is happening, he's a people. pinball wizard. Plunge the ball and use your flippers. Um, yeah, pinball. So my buddy Dan Brennan and I, one I of my best Dan. friends in the whole world. Yeah. Um, he um, he and I used to to play pinball back in like 2005. Maybe uh, Papa's Pizza always had to because the Bill over there and his brother had. Uh, two pinball, they were big pinball nuts, and maybe one at, uh, one at pizza, and like maybe one other down south side. Like we had to like travel. But over the years, now Bartari's open, they found out, wait, there's a lot of people in the area who like pinball. Cause like there are cities who are pits pinball cities, Pittsburgh, pinball city, Vancouver, Seattle. Um, you know, Binghamton actually has a, a, a nice pinball scene up there. So Scranton now, uh, Dan started putting together a tournament, and then now uh, our buddy Ryan has a league that goes on every Wednesday, like a bowling league. And you meet all these people. They drive up from Wilkes-Barre, wherever they're coming from. Uh, oh, yeah, it, it, it's great. It, it's really, I love pinball so much, and it's great to see, uh, like Maureen Duffy just joined. Oh, Maureen, excellent. Never played pinball in her life. Um, or if she did, you know, didn't play play. And now there we are every week, and it's just meeting new people, and we're all just having a good laugh, and... There's new pinball, like the pinball industry actually is like taking on new, more and more, like more machines are coming out than they ever did. It, all, it almost died like in the early 2000s. So I was going to ask you, are there new machines? Are they, oh, are they absolutely. resurrecting yeah. the old ones? Yeah, the Jaws machine just came out. It's great. Uh, and now like they're modern, so they have like these like computerized screens. So they have like clips of the movie play. Like if you're about to tilt it, it's Sebastian Shaw dra dragging his nails down the chalkboard, <laughs> saying warning, warning, things like that. Um, well, how do you compete? Is it just about high score or something? No. So when you're in the league, uh, it's every it goes on for like eight weeks, and you're in with a different group of three other people every week. And so, do you uh, pick those people, or is it random? It's random, and so you have four rounds. And so if I'm listed first in the first round, I get to pick the machine, and then we play. And if I came in first, I get seven points. If you came in second, you got five. The other person got three points, and so you get either one, three, five, or seven points. And so that, you know, perfect score would be 28 points. It's kind of like that. And then after uh, like eight weeks, you know, we play, because it's 20 bucks to join. So then, you, you know, you win the kitty. Uh, but then there's, you know, tournaments too, where you show up and it's just one day and all these people show up and you could win several hundred dollars. I mean, I'm not that good. Dan and a bunch of other people are much better, yeah. but oh. Pinball, that's my happy time on Wednesdays at Bartari. Right. And you're drinking while you're doing it? or is it Oh, a, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I yeah. mean, not everybody. Some guys are very serious. They put the headphones in. They block out the sound. Yeah, I've got a Guinness, and I'm having fun just. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm very happy. Scranton is becoming a pinball city. Pinballs, murals, theater. Uh, wow. It's a whole new world. It's a whole new world. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was growing up in the 80s. It looked like. Beirut after you know, downtown. Explosion. Yeah, yeah I mean, downtown was, was looking pretty rough. Oh, there's. I wish I still had it. I had a video that somebody made. It was a movie, uh, and there was. It was called Freaky Freddy. There used to be a, a I character. Remember Freaky Freddy. Freaky Freddy. So yeah, they made a movie yeah. with him. A little exploitative, kind of putting him in this thing. But there's shots of Andy Gavin's in there. That, yeah, I think I've seen this. Have you seen yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the shots of downtown. They go down like the poor uh, uh, pub uh, Charles. And the streets outside. Strip club. The strip club. And before they go out, they just show like the streets around that area, which is where Martin Duffy's store was, you know, that right there. Um, and there's just garbage all over the streets. I'm like, I can't imagine going out and seeing gar like that much garbage. No, like, it, no. it looked disgusting. 
and it was a gray and miserable. So now when you see like, oh my God, now we've got you know all sorts of new stores and all this other pocket stuff parks and the stuff. pop, you know that's what I mean. So that that stuff keeps coming. You know we're doing all right. It, yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. I remember the pub Charles. Uh, <laughs> I was a kid when I went there, like oh, you know, yeah? twenty or whatever, not even of age. And I remember I went in and the cover was, I think the cover was five dollars. Whoa. And I gave the guy um, a 10. Mm -hmm. And he gave me 15 back. The, and I said, and I, I, I said, listen, I, I think you made a mistake. And, you know, and, and he said, get the heck inside. I don't want to have to deal with you. And I'm like, all right. So I got paid money to go see the strippers. You know, I'm thinking, this is great. You know, I was 20. He could have benefited from the PAEP NEIU program he using the arts and math together. He could have. We could have <laughs> saved. But it turned out all right for you. So. It, it did. And, and all my uh, friends that looked down on, on uh, the stripper scene, I apologize. I was 20 just following. Hey. You know. Plus, I was also It's you know, not who curious. you were. It's who you are now. That's right. I learned. Mm -hmm. I never really liked the stripper scene. I have to be honest with you. I, I never felt, did either. I, I always to, felt it was exploitation, I, always. I'm just, I went to one once for a bachelor party, and like, right. none of us really even wanted to go. No. And we, you know, we were there, and I'm like, eh, you know, this isn't, you know, I don't know. No, I agree with you. So, we're with you on that. Nothing against. If that's your line of work, if you no. are out there dancing, do it. Yeah. You want to go see it? It's not for me. I've had a couple of students who were strippers yeah. over the years, and they're very. They're, these particular people were very bright and very. Oh, driven, absolutely. And they were making tons of money. Absolutely, they're shrewd. They're yeah, sharp. Very, I mean, very shrewd. I tell you what, the dancers that come in that I've had uh, when I'm bartending, oh, the nicest people, great tippers. Yeah, because they know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the you know, all about. exactly. They're 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 hustling and they're yeah they're they're I mean yeah. No judgment, no judgment. Yeah, I just remember not. the pub Charles. That that place was a bit seedy. Well, I remember in the in the in the film that the the, the movie. I remember they do go inside, and I had never been in. I, that's the only. And I'm like, ooh, that's a. That's a, that's a, a point in time. It, that, it, that type of, of strip club in the yeah. '80s in Scranton. That's uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So enough about the pub. But I didn't know we were going to get to the pub, Charles. Well, that was pretty cool. Twenty minutes on the pub, Charles. Twenty minutes. The next twenty minutes about super dads. The super dads in the Grand View. In the Grand. Well, <laughs> how come we know them all if we don't go? Right. <laughs> super dad. Like, again, I'm not into the strip clubs, but super dads. That's a hilarious name. It is. I don't know who named it. That's a hilarious <laughs> it, it name. It is. It is. Lou's Blue Room. I think that one's just oh. controversial. That, uh, Lou's place. Blue Room. I forgot about that. That's yeah. Down in, in, I knew some people that played live music down yeah. at Lou's Blue Room. The, really? Yeah. That's kind of neat. Like the bur burlesque days. It kind of was kind of, yeah, it was yeah. kind of like that. Yeah. That's an art form. Burlesque is an art oh, form. Oh, that is. Yeah, I yeah. definitely know I people. mean, stripping is too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it, I can't do it. No, I can't either. And no one wants to see that anyway. No, so. no, that would be, re, 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 not you, me, I'm thinking. That would be repugnant. <laughs> so um, let's go to something a little yeah, bit different. Yeah. Transition. Walking the dog. Walking the dog. That could be a euphemism. I, I mean literally. Yeah. Walking the dog in our local woods. That's the one of the things you woods. love to do. Oh, my goodness. How? Listen, out there in TV land, where are you? The woods, this grant I love for a lot of reasons, but the forests around this area, we have such access to such great nature. We you do. can just, you can be downtown having a hoagie, a playing hoagie. pinball, and you can get in your car in 10 minutes and be in the middle of nowhere. Right. That, you can't do that in everywhere, you know. You can do it in some places, but, and it's great. You can just get lost in a country road, pull over and be in a, a, a creek somewhere. Um, and crick, that's my script crick. coming out. Oh, I've had an argument with my wife. She's from Long Island. She's like, what is a crick? Creek. Like, well, my wife's from Long Island, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. She get them together. <laughs> yeah, so she says creek, and me and Dan Brown are like, no, it's crick. It's smaller than a creek. It's, it's crick. But, yeah, so the nature around here, my dog, Hank, who is my best friend in the whole world, uh, yeah, we are always up in Dunmore going up Roaring Brook there. We go, you know, up the Eels Preserve up on uh, by Music Lake. You know, there's, I mean, I have all my little hidey holes over here. I go up on top of East Mountain, and they're so close, and you can just go. Although I am bummed to, to see that the, they emptied the number seven dam, and Roaring Brook is completely changed now. Yeah, the, yeah. It was in the paper. The it was in the paper. There was like a weird smell or something. It was, I'm going to tell you, I, before I saw the story, I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought it was floodwaters, because, no, we've had very high waters from melting snow and things. Because um, even if you go to Cedar Avenue over Roaring Brook by the Iron Furnaces, there used to be a, a deep part of the river. Yes. And now it's this deep because the silt, they let the dam go. It completely muddied the entire river. 
Do, do we know why? They, they were doing work on the number seven dam, and I guess, and just whatever they did. Again, I, I don't know. Did I they mean, break I, it? Is that I, 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 don't, I don't, again, I, it was in the paper, and I only got to read the first half of the article because I was in a cafe. And, um, but yeah, like up in, under, um, like in Roaring Brook, up past uh, DePietro, as you go under the 81 goes over, I go there, and I go up the river, and there's a, uh, like a, a jumping point. You can go off the rock, and now it's gone. That's no It's good. dry because there's just so much silt filled it in, and the mud just filled up to here. All up and down. It was wild. Uh, if you go uh, to Neog, there's parts uh, above the Kanjorski Bridge that now are completely like the rivers, like change shape and things like that. Do, uh, we, do we have any idea if they're going to get it back to where, where? I don't know. I know they can't release the trout this year, though. That was part of the article. There's no trout season on the uh, on the Roaring Brook. This is awful. Yeah. I, I, and again, I, I got to talk to Bernie McGurl. I keep right. thinking, Bernie, if you're out there. Lackawanna River. I'm looking at you. What is it? Conservancy now, I think, right? Yeah, the Lackawanna River uh, Corridor Association, and then now it's Conservancy. Conservancy, it's I think they changed the name. Did but, they change it? All right. Yeah, but Bernie's the man. And I know, yeah, I, he, you know, obviously, he's definitely going to know. Because uh, I'm like, is this healthy for the river? I, I, I don't I know. Can't I, like it. It I can't see how it is, because it really is water that used to be this deep, and you could jump in and not hit the bottom, and now you can see how high it's gotten, and it's very odd. And it's a, you know, where we live, it's a strange situation, always has been. Yeah. You know, the, the inception of, of the northeast of Scranton in particular yeah. is about industry. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's what made us economically strong, all these beautiful buildings, oh, yeah, all yeah. the beautiful architecture and theaters that are still here because of that wealth. Yeah. But the negative side is what we're talking about. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, the, the natural environment, which is plentiful, but does... And has been uh, abused for oh, absolutely, hundred plus years. I know this <clears throat> is uh, well. That's it. There's even um, I saw this is like going back to the 1880s. I think it was. It was in the Scranton Times, the Scranton Examiner, whatever it was at the time. One of the probably the four papers we had in the city because it was burgeoning city. Now we barely have one. Well, we barely, barely. Do we even count that now? No. Half the staff. A hedge is, fund we, owns it. A so, hedge fund, and everybody I know that worked there is gone. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah it's, it's a joke. But back then, they even had an article, and this is, again, like around 1890, I think, about how the Lackawanna River is completely polluted. And that was 1890. Wow. Yeah, and the that was the revolution. Yeah. yeah and sure. so, I mean, exactly. They were just dumping everything in there. Right. And so, like, when Bernie and the gang started in the 70s, I mean, it's completely different. They saved that river. Um, it won Best River uh, in PA a couple of years ago. That's right. Yeah. Um, I voted for it. Did you? <laughs> uh so, yeah, and I, I hate when I go out hiking because, again, I, I love I go out there for peace and, and solitude, just enjoy, and there's just a giant pile of trash and beer cans. And I'm like, you carried it in. Can right. you just carry it it's out? It's not that difficult. And they never do. And listen, I'm going to call them out. It's always a light beer. Always, so it's always a light beer or a twisted tea. Not IPA. It's not an IPA. I think your IPA or a Guinness. Or a Guinness, yeah, a rare. Maybe once or twice I've seen IPA, but for the most part, it's always the cheap beer drinkers. Mm. I'm not saying you are. My buddy Brian Lang and likes a good Miller Lite, and I know he would never do that. Brian, I love Brian. Yeah, Brian, he, he's been on your show a few times. Yes, he has. Uh, so yeah, it always bumps me out. I'm just like, can you just, you, you, you got a backpack. You carry that beer in somehow. Put the empties in there. Take them out, you know. They're taking it for granted. They are. Connor. They're taking it for granted. They're taking it for granted. For granted. For granted. granted. Oh, that's, yeah. How many times do you hear that? Um, I got the arthritis. <laughs> they took it for granted in my youth. <laughs> youth. My youth. I love it. Um, let's see what else we have here, Connor. Yeah, I'm yeah. Later to have on you me. here on Stories, Wisdom, oh, and Recipes. Oh, this is a blast. It is. We're just getting started, but we have time limits, time constraints. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, um... Your, your Scranton Fringe show. Oh, yeah. Give us a little insight about that. Okay. The most recent Graphic creation. Prince. Graphic Prince. Uh, P-R-I-N-T-S. Uh, so this show I was so proud of um, because I've done several shows in the Fringe before, and I really love doing them because I have a weird mind, as you saw, where I wear a thumb and pretend I'm lip syncing. Uh, and I've done shows in the past that were, um, it was like a 70s uh, roast for a guy and uh, things like that, and then another one. It was like after school special, where like what happened? You know, they remember the after school oh, special? Of course, like, yeah. You know? um, well, I took one day where every single bad thing happens to a family that would happen in an after school special: <laughs> bullying and drug use and divorce <laughs> and all this stuff. So, and it's just wacky, uh, things like that. Well, this one actually made a, in a complete like fifty-five minute show, uh, where a guy shows up at an or he doesn't know he was works for an advertising firm, but he gets a letter: Hey, show up at this office and we'll pay a lot of money, but he doesn't know what for. Turns out his boss 
is it was played by Jess, my wife. She told me she always ends up playing like the, the nice girl and things like that in plays because um, she's an, an actor too. That's how we met actually. Um, and she's like, I always wanted to play a, a villain. I said, all right, I'm going to write a play with a good villain. So she ends up playing this black beehive bouffant, eye patch, drag, pale makeup woman in a giant 1950s kind of house dress. Um, and she's just odd. And he can't figure her out. And I'm in the office, and all I do is talk in, like, advertising slocums and idioms. Um, and then there's another woman, Heather Stewart, another wonderful actor in the area, um, who's in the office, and she's very nervous, like a social ladder climber. And Dave Danielowski, who is also a friend of mine in the acts, he's the guy. He can't figure things out. Finds out the company just makes, if there's a T-shirt in the world with a really crappy phrase on it, it came from that office. And it ends up, and spoiler alert, she's actually some sort of witch. <laughs> who controls people's souls by putting these phrases on, vapid, these dumb statements, you know, that, that we see, you know, you know, children are the soul of laughter. Some stupid thing that, you know, an auntie out there somewhere is going to be like, oh, this is sweet, you know. And so it was a wild, it was a dark comedy is what it was. And we have these T-shirts that makes fun of them, like, makes fun of the banality of life and commerce and all in the office, workplace, and what is it to actually find fulfillment and work. Those themes were in there, but it was a wacky, wacky show. And in the end, he ends up becoming like the new witch. And at the end, he, uh, he has the new idea to control people's souls, and it's signs that say, live, laugh, love. You know, so, <laughs> you pray, yeah. whatever. Yeah, exactly, yeah. whatever it is. He's yeah. like, signs and flags, this is what people want now. Um, so that was, that was the gist. But I was really proud of it, and we did it at the Shake Space, which is a wonderful new theatrical space downtown. Oh, the Scranton Shakespeare Festival. Scranton Shakespeare Festival has that. Great organization. Great organization. I'm on the planning committee down there, um, and that we continue to do stuff, and it's great we have that space down there. So, yeah, I was happy to have that space. I, I love the space down there. Yeah, yeah. Formerly the Gap. The Gap, yeah. It's in, the, it's in formerly the mall. Formerly now the mall. Now it's the marketplace. And nothing says you're from this area like saying what it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> The Even right. Boris said, was that the, the old school? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. yeah, it's like, we still call that the new high school. It has a, it, it's been there for 20 years. <laughs> exactly, in the old school. It's always, oh, it's the old gap. Yeah. It's the old mall. Yeah, I can't help it. That's it's the way we are. That's who we, we are. Well, well, we know the history of the area, which is kind of oh, good. Oh, yeah. I think that's a good thing. My dad said, uh, my dad actually uh, went to Ireland in 1967 to ride a bicycle around Ireland. That's how we got in touch with our family over there. What, uh, what county? County Mayo. Everybody from this area is from County Mayo. And when you go over there, all the faces look exactly the same. The <laughs> names on the businesses, it's like, oh, there's this name, this name. But he, he said it was funny. It's like he was in, I think, maybe near Northern Ireland or something like that. Uh, and he's getting directions. He's like, oh, we have to go down to uh, where the statue is. Uh, statue's not there anymore. It got blown up. But you take a right at where the statue used to be. He's <laughs> like, all right, so I take a right where the statue used to be. Okay. Are there any remnants of the statue? Yeah, like, can there, is there anything else near where the statue used to be? I might be able to put That yeah. sounds awesome. Uh, so when we, we, we look at everything that we talked about today, mm -hmm. and um, you reflect on, I guess, you know, life, basically. Yeah. You're, yeah. A, you're a man in his early middle age. You, you can say middle. Middle? 45, man. 45. It don't get more middle than that. Yeah. Maybe even past middle. Well, it depends. I, one of my friends who's my age, yeah. I'm about 10 years older than you, He's, he claimed the other day he was middle-aged. I said, well, what are you going to live to be 110? Well, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, I don't see myself getting 90. I climb a lot of dumb trees. <laughs> uh, the trees aren't dumb. I'm dumb. And I just picture him. I always tell my wife, I'm going to fall out of a tree <laughs> or off a cliff on, when I'm on my hiking trips. I am never planned well. I was in Norway on top of a mountain in like, Dress shoes. Yeah, a little I was cold. in Alaska and dress. I, I go. I, I'm like. I guess I go hiking. I, You're I don't resilient. Plan. Though. I don't plan ahead. You're resilient. I guess. Yeah. So, but all of these experiences, yeah. all this time to reflect when you go for a walk in the yeah. woods, traveling around, doing the work that you do on stage, writing, performing, mm -hmm. it gives you an opportunity to to really look at the human experience, right? Oh yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, reflect on life and being part of this world. Yeah. What have you come up with so far? as to what it is all about and how to live it. How to live it. Boy, I, that's a, what a loaded question there, buddy. Let me you just unpack this. Okay, how to live it. I, um, I don't know. I tell you what, I, I think in life, especially in this modern world of ours, it is so important to, to get back to quiet. Quiet everything down. Everything is so loud and never ending. It's an ad nauseum barrage of noise and images. And I think, 
I don't think we get the time. And myself included, I'm, I'm in, the, in the mix. I go home, oh, turn on the thing. Let me turn on the thing. You know, it's just like, I, it's, I think a lot of people just don't get the quiet anymore. I mean, I, I, I know people, they couldn't take the quiet. They had to turn something on. I think we just don't, we're not used to it anymore. And why is that a bad thing? You can't listen to yourself. You're getting distracted. Your eyes and your ears, it's tough. Kind of like why I said, like, before going to college, maybe you should go walk around somewhere, take a walk about because you get to know what are your thoughts, what are you, what are you doing, um, and I think I think that's one of the things that's really really helps you ground yourself. You know, you're not at sea. Like, you know, I think that's why meditation has become a bigger thing, and they do even have it in schools now. And I think that's great. I think it's great because I these kids. I mean, I saw an ad or an article years ago. It was like how many advertisements a, a, a child sees before he even gets to school. Right. It's insane. And now it's even worse. And now it's even With, worse. Without the, everybody having a phone. Their, their phone and the ads are five <clears throat> seconds long, you know, uh, and there's just boom, 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 boom. And I think it's, it, it's tough. So I think that's part of it. What was the other part of your question? Well, you know, what, what, basically how to live it, what's, what's it all about? Like, what's what's it point? all about? What's it all about? <laughs> I think this world has got so many amazing goddamn things in it. And I think it's about seeing them and, and, and just appreciating them. Really look and be like, what is that? You hear something and you see something in conjunction, you know. Maybe you're downtown and you see a guy scratching his butt and you hear like calypso music in a car. It's like, that's kind of amazing. <laughs> you got to be open to these experiences or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. You got to look for these, everything happening at once and how just goddamn amazing it is. And I don't think a lot of us do. And I'm, and I'm not saying I do it all the time either. You know, I get lost in the fog. I'm stressed. I get anxiety about things. But when you stop, you're like, this is pretty cool. You know, and there's a lot to get stressed about. And there's a lot of hate and a lot of all that stuff. But like, sometimes you just got to be like, I think what it really is about is just taking all those senses in and feeling and seeing. And th this is a hippy-dippy answer. No, but, I'm, but I'm a mamby-pamby tree hugger. And that's the way it is. But it's the truth. You got to use all those senses. And make sure you take time and be like, all right, I'm part of this thing, you know? And I think also part of it is uh, we think that the earth and this is what we got. When you really, like, I'm a big lover of space stuff. Me too. When you pull back and pull back and, look. and pull back and you're angry because the Pop-Tart burned, you know? And now there are things to be angry about. I'm not saying that. Trust me. There's a lot of aggression and stuff. But when you pull back and pull back, you just realize how... One, small we are, and how truly unique everything is that we're around. You know, everything is so, how did we get here? My God, I existed at the same time as that flower and that dog doing that thing at the same time. Like, it's great, you know. It's, it's, I think it's, it's appreciation, I think, is, is what you really got to find, you know. Awesome. Yeah. I appreciate you being part of this hey, thing. Hey, I appreciate you having me on. Stories, wisdom, and recipes. You shared all of that. <laughs> yeah. You did. Oh, recipe. Uh, peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly. Put it on bread. We got the recipe. There we go. Got the recipe. Oh, well, the recipe's for life, but that, yeah. yeah. I, I love peanut butter <laughs> and jelly. Recipes for life. Okay, yeah. yeah. Look at this guy being all poetic about it. <laughs> well, Connor, I, I, again, thank you. <laughs> we'll have you on again for sure if yeah, you want. Yeah, And uh, we have another performance, I, I know. Yeah. Now, you gave me, I think, two acronyms or one acronym, HPVPSA? Yeah, HPVPSA. You know what's funny? Cancer. You see, I had some cancer. I beat it. I bet it, as they say. Uh, I bet it. Uh, and this is just my funny take on having HPV cancer uh, in a, a goofy way. Uh, again, I, I'm a survivor, so I can say this. Uh, I don't want you to take offense. It really is a PSA about HPV, but it's done in my own way. I love it. I'm happy you survived it. Uh, th yeah, thanks. I am too. We caught it early. I, I was never scared. They never gave me grim news, so I was never worried. But obviously, my poor wife, who was watching me drop like 60 pounds, oh, and I couldn't it's eat. It's been hard on her. It was hard. We were planning a wedding at the same time, so Jess, she's a saint. She is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got through it. And now we can laugh about it on stories, wisdom, and recipes. Excellent. Well, show us what you got. And thank you. Give me hey. a fist pump there, man. All right. You're awesome. Hey, thank you. All right, I'm going to take a second Yeah, here. while, while uh, Connor gets himself uh, situated, do you need some music set up in, in the uh, Yeah, I'm going to have to set that up in a second. While he's doing that, I'll just uh, give you some uh, information that might be useful. First of all, you should go on to YouTube and look for all the ECTV archives that Mark has been putting up there, Mark McGlory, uh, for us. There's uh, an archive for stories, wisdom, and recipes, for city council meetings, for graffiti, 
Uh, any show pretty much that we had talk of the town, any show that has been on this station over the years, Mark is building an archive for. If he has tapes of, of some of the, uh, the different um, uh, episodes over the years. So look for that on YouTube. Also, uh, I'll plug my radio show on Radio Free Brooklyn. Every Friday, 10 p.m., Troubadours and Rock On Tours with E.W. Conundrum Demure. Check that out. Uh, and be sure to enjoy all of the arts that exist here in our neck of the woods and wherever you go. Take a ride into New York. It's easy to Philly and go see some stuff, too. But make sure you support what's going on here. Uh, do you need something? You ready? Yeah, I have to set this up real quick. So you mean set it up for the audience, or just set up? No, technically? I just got to get the song on. You know, it's a, it's a particular song. It's a that's a great jacket. Oh yeah, well, you know, if you're gonna do something, do it right. That's correct. So uh, whenever Connor's ready, he's going to take us out of this episode of Stories, Wisdom, and Recipes. And again, I'm Lawrence Pugliese. I just hit my mic. I hope I didn't make up make too much noise. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for watching the show. We'll see you again soon. And uh, Hit that button. we're ready to go with Connor McGuigan and his piece HPV PSA. Take it away, Connor. Why, hello there, out in TV land. I couldn't help but notice that you we're taking a gander at my mask. You might have been thinking, my goodness, that's a swell-looking mask, Connor. Where can I get one like it? The cut, the fit, the way it forms to your face. Well, I have some good news for you. If you would like a mask like this, all you have to do is get yourself a case of HPV. Why, what's HPV, Connor? Why, it's an STI. Where do I get it? Here's the good news. You probably already do. You see, HPV is the most common of all STIs. It can occur anywhere, and sometimes you don't even have to have intercourse to get it. But if you do, there's a chance you could get cancer. <laughs> I know you don't want that. Nobody wants that. But look at this mask. If you're like me, it can develop in the neck. And I know you ladies know it can develop in the cervix. But if you get it in the neck, let me tell you the joys you will experience. They'll put you on a table. They will take a mold of your face. And every day for 30, maybe 40, 50 days, you get to go on a table, roll back, and a robot will pour delicious, nutritious radiation right into your neck. It's going to kill all those bad cells, and it's going to kill all those good cells as well. You may not be able to eat any food drink any water, or maybe even speak. <laughs> but look at this mask, everybody. How can you say no to this? But that's okay. Maybe you're saying, Connor, I don't want the mask. In fact, I don't even want HPV. Well, if you're one of those people, I got some good news for you. There's a vaccine for it now. In fact, if you're a parent, you can get an HPV vaccine for your child even before they start entering the adult world of love, if you know what I mean. So take it from me, people. If you want the mask, you know what to do. And if you don't, get that vaccine. See you on the morrow.